In this video, we will compare Python Azure Functions programming model v1 versus v2. So v2 is the recommended approach from Azure itself. So let's see like what's the difference between these two programming models. So in programming model v1, it relies on function.json file to define our function. And also it will be having the init.py file, which would define the entry point of any function. So suppose like if we have to define multiple functions, so the hierarchy is going to look like this. So here we are going to have our first function, then init.py file along with the function.json file. And then if we are defining another function, then again we have to define the init.py file along with the function.json file. This is the approach that we follow in programming model v1. In our earlier video where we have defined Azure function, it was based on this programming model v1. This is how it's going to look like. So first of all, you could see we do have the init.py file and this is where we define all our programming code and this is considered as an entry point for our function and along with this we are going to have a function.json file which would help us to identify what kind of functions we are trying to create so in this case this is a blob trigger function and this is for inbound and this is the container which it is tracking and then we were defining the connection string so that's why this function.json file was critical because using this only we would get to know okay what kind of connection we have to use what kind of path we have to define and what kind of function is this but in programming model v2 a lot of things have been changed so first of all they have introduced the decorator approach so what exactly is decorator it's basically a function which takes another function as an argument so if you have to enhance any existing functions then we can enhance it using a decorator approach and we don't have to modify anything in the existing function and that's what actually we have written over here without permanently modifying the original function itself. So let me show you a very simple code on decorator just to get like some understanding around it. This is a very simple decorator function which we have written just to gain some understanding around it like how does it work. So here you can see our base function is like this. So this is an existing function. Now we want to modify this like we want to add something before that and after that without modifying anything in this function, right? This is how actually we are going to define our decorator. So this is my decorator and as we have seen in our design diagram, this takes function as an argument. So we are defining this function as an argument and after that you can see there is a wrapper we have defined there is another method for this and we are just printing something is happening before the function is called then we are calling the main existing function and then something is happening after the function is called then we are returning this particular method with what we have defined over here now we have to add it on this existing function so we have to just define decorator like this so at the rate my decorator after that like if you try to print this say hello after executing it you can see printing something is happening before the function is called then this function output and after that another you know output is coming over here which is something is happening after the function is called so we haven't modified anything in this one but still we were able to modify the output what we are getting from this function and this is what decorator does and in this programming model v2 this decorator approach has been followed so you will see a lot of at the rate annotation and wherever actually you see that at the rate annotation it's basically saying okay this particular thing has been defined as a decorator after that another enhancement what has been done in programming model v2 so instead of having this multiple files like init.py file or function.json file everything has been clubbed into only one file and which is going to be function underscore app.py file function.json file was critical in programming model v1 because that's where we were defining our triggers the bindings and everything which we have just covered earlier but everything has been moved to the decorator so now you don't have to define anything extra another concept what has been introduced in uh, programming model v2 is the blueprints blueprints would help you to bind multiple functions all together so here you can see if you have to define multiple function then there is a init.py file function.json file so if there is a third function then we have to follow the similar approach only where we have to define the init.py file and function.json file but in programming model v2 everything has been moved and now actually you are going to have only function underscore app.py file that is going to be your main file and after that, like if, if you want to define multiple functions, then you can use something like blueprints. So you can put your code over here in this blueprint.py kind of file. What you can do in blueprint, like you can introduce new classes, new method and everything into blueprint.py. Once you define your function in the blueprint.py and there could be like multiple function. You can have your block trigger function. You can have your HTTP trigger function. Everything you can define first of all in blueprint.py file. And after that, like you have to register your function in the function underscore app.py file. 
because if you're not registering your function then you won't be able to call it you can define multiple function over here and after that like you can register in function underscore app dot py file and this is what has been written over here the function registered in blueprint is instances are not indexed directly by function runtime so if you're thinking in this way you just define your functions all your function in the blueprint dot py file and you just went ahead and execute your function and thinking okay it's going to get triggered it's not going to get triggered because you have to define your function first of all over here and after that to get all these functions indexed you have to register these functions into function underscore app dot py file so this is something that i will cover in detail like how we can do it but these are the basic differences between programming model v1 and v2 so you can see like why this programming model v2 has been preferred because they have removed all this redundancy which was there earlier in programming model v1 so let me try to create a functions using this programming model v2 so i will go to my visual studio and i will try to open new window and first of all actually i will try to go to azure account and here i do have my account so let me try to create a function now so you can see like i do have this icon so creating a function and deploying it on azure all the steps are going to be same there are some minor differences where actually instead of using the programming model v1 we have to use the programming model v2 so let me just create a function let me create a folder i am just calling it as your demo v2 and i'm selecting this now my function is going to get created over there so the next step is it's asking for language i'm going to select python now it's asking select a python programming model i'm going to select model v2 and i will skip this virtual environment and after that it's asking like what kind of function you want to create so i will go ahead with blob trigger name the functions you want to create so i will just call it func blob trigger and v2 after that is asking for a path the path within your storage account that the trigger will monitor i will just call it common container 360 I will just select create the new local app setting use your storage for remote storage and I don't have any existing uh, storage account so I will create a new one it's asking for a name so I will probably just call it storage demo 3006 we'll see whether it will take this name and now it's asking for a resource group i will just provide a resource group as well so rg demo azure v2 location is us and i would like to open it in the current window so it's creating uh, the storage account and everything over here as you can see so we'll wait for a few minutes to get everything created okay i can see now it's done so let me just verify on azure portal also whether my storage has been created or not so i will go to my storage account yeah so you can see my storage account has been created over here so i will just click on this then i will go to container so let me just try to see what kind of container we have created it was common container 360 so i will just take this and we'll try to create a container with this name only as my storage account has been created i will just Put this common container 360 and I will try to create it so we do have our storage account and the container account created okay so here you can see like I am getting a permission issue so what I will do like I will go to access control I am and I will try to to grant myself access to this particular bucket go for storage so I will select this blob data contributor and select member and i will search for my email id i will try to provide it so that like i can perform some operation on this bucket and it is stating that i am being added as storage blob data contributor for common Container 360 it's completed so now again i will try to go over here and try to refresh it so now you can see that error is gone you may need to uh, wait for a few minutes before actually we can see this screen without that error so now let's go back to our code once we create this function using this programming model v2 you can see this is how the code is going to look like so you can see the argument name and everything has been moved from function.json file over here and you can see like this particular app has been registered using this function app and after that you can see the first sign of the decorator over here this is the blob trigger decorator and you can see the argument 
name over here the path and the connection storage so everything has been moved from function.json file to this decorator itself and after that you can see it's a normal function so this is any storage triggered function so it's just writing the blob name and the length of the file which we are going to upload so let me try to run this and show you like how does it work let me try to run it without debugging and we would connect to storage account it's asking for storage account i will just select storage demo and you can see this function is getting triggered now you can see like it has notified okay there is a particular function which is running now let me try to show you uh, this particular function in action so what i will do like i will go to my storage bucket and i will try to upload some files over here so this is the sample find one two and that's it i will try to upload it and then i will go back to my function you can see like as soon as we have uploaded that file this particular function has been triggered and you can see what is getting printed over here so the first process blob name is sample.txt after that you can see this particular function is succeeded why this function is triggered because a new blob has been detected and you can see there is another file sample2.txt so it has processed both files as soon as we have uploaded it so this function has been triggered successfully the second part is like how to use blueprint right that was also like one of the core concept of this so for that what i'm trying to do i will just go over here and i will create a new file and i will just call it blueprint.py and the idea is this blueprint should be able to help us to define multiple functions over here and after that like we should be able to call all this without writing like multiple files now we will try to use blueprint to trigger the same blob trigger function so for that first of all we will try to take this code and try to move it to blueprint.py file and here we can just paste this code and after that we have to import few things so first thing we are going to import is this function so i'm going just going to take it from here and going to print it into blueprint now as we import this function after that actually we have to create a variable and here actually we have to create a blueprint variable so i'm just going to call blueprint and now wherever actually we are using app we have to use bp over there and as we are using logging over here we have to import logging as well and the last thing what we need to do is you know give some name to our function function name and i'm just going to call it blob v2 so once we define our function in blueprint we have to register it as well so we are going to go our function and whatever code we have written as of now we have to just remove it altogether as we are not going to use logging we have to remove this as well and from here we are going to use blueprint import bp and this blueprint actually we have to register over here so for this we are going to call this bp now we have defined our function in blueprint and after that we have registered it also in function now we should be able to go ahead and execute this code so for that i'm just going to again run it without debugging and let me try to upload a file over here this is sample2 file And now let's see whether it's going to get triggered for sample 2 and you can see that even after converting this function into blueprint we were able to invoke this function as soon as any file is being uploaded over here so this is one part now let me stop this function as we have seen earlier this blueprint is going to help us to call multiple functions right so instead of as of now we have just defined one particular function blob trigger but I can go ahead and define an HTTP trigger function as well over here. So for that, I'm just going to take some code which I already have it handy. And I'm just going to take it and copy paste it over here. Now you can see our earlier function was for blob triggered and this function is for HTTP request call. So it's a HTTP triggered function and it's a very simple function. So as soon as we are going to call, so we have to either pass that name or it's going to take world as a parameter and this particular function is just going to print out hello world as soon as we invoke it so let's try to to go to our function app we don't have to do anything else over here because we have registered whole blueprint over in this particular function so again i would go ahead and try to run this code without debugging so now you can see there are two functions registered over here one is hello world and another is this blob trigger function so let's try to upload a file first so let's try to invoke a blob trigger function
let's go to our visual studio and you can see as soon as we upload this sample 3 file this blob trigger function has been triggered and let me try to invoke this http triggered function just by clicking on this i will just press ctrl and click and you can see i have invoked this function and it has printed out hello world so same thing we should be able to see over here so you can see in the console python http trigger function is triggered and it has processed a request it has been succeeded as well so this is how actually we can invoke multiple functions without defining it into multiple files we can just define it in the blueprint and after that we can just register it in the function app.py file and uh, it should be able to help us to invoke multiple functions yeah so that's it over here so let me close this so the deployment steps would be same what we have followed in our earlier video programming model v1 azure function deployment video i will just put that link in the description so that like you can go over that video as well and if you want to deploy an azure you can follow the same steps it will help you to deploy this azure function on azure platform that's it for this video thank you for watching